Now you lift your hands to the heavens and just glorify Him. Mighty God, we exalt you and glorify you. Oh, yes, we worship Jesus. We give Him the glory and the fruit of our lips. Oh, bread of life is from you. Bread of life is you. Mountains bow before you. Oh, 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 all the angels worship you. Angels worship you. You say, Oh, 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 oh Lord, we honor you. Raise your voice, say, Oh. Oh, yeah. 
power to save me, Jesus, the Son of God. Let's thank God for the rendition from the choristers. We pray that God will strengthen them, empower them, and continue to favor them in Jesus' name. Kindly let us pray. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jehovah, the man of war, his mercies endure forever and ever. O oh, praise his holy name. Alleluia, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jehovah, the man of war. Your mercies endure forever and ever. O oh, precious holy name. Almighty and everlasting Father, we want to say thank you for your mercy, for your kindness, for your favor, for your protection, for provision, for preservation, for enduring with us, for tolerating us, for accommodating us. We say thank you. Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Thank you for what you have been doing in the past. Thank you for what you are about to do now. Thank you for what you will continue to do. May your name be praised forever in Jesus' name. We are here once again in your presence to cry, Abba, Father, to seek for your favor, for your kindness than ever before. Answer us in Jesus' name. Let your mercy speak for us today in Jesus' name. Let your mercy give us supernatural breakthrough today in the name of Jesus. Father, we want to pray for your son, our daddy, and the entire family. Hold them in your right hand in Jesus' name. Let your everlasting hand continually support them and carry them in Jesus' name. Everything concerning them, please perfect it in Jesus' name. Tonight, Holy Spirit, take control in Jesus' name. Favor us like never before in Jesus' name. And we give back the glory to you and you alone in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank God for yet another opportunity to be here for the faith clinic of tonight. And we want to thank our beloved daddy dearly, our father in the Lord, for this grace and privilege given to us. We want to thank everyone that have been part of this program. God Almighty, we favor all of us today in Jesus' name. Uh, we want to talk about the season of favor, season of favor. And our text is taken from Psalm 102, verse 13. Psalm 102, 13. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion, for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. This is your set time of favor. This is my set time of favor. And God will favor us in Jesus' name. You know, when you consider very well the word of King Solomon, in Ecclesiastic chapter 9, verse 11, Ecclesiastic 9, 11, which reads, I return and saw that the sun, that the race is not to the sweet, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance happened to them all. From this passage, you discover that man cannot really change his situation, his status, or circumstances for good simply by his effort, 
is our skill alone. It just has to be by intervention of God who owns the time and seasons and who controls the seasons of life. No wonder the Bible tells us also in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and 7, 1 Corinthians 4 7, summary of it is nothing that you have that you have not received. So if that is the case, laboring and toiling day and night may not result to expected results, may not give us significant results. But one thing is sure, if God favor comes to your life, it will change every struggling and every toiling. So, but if your experience today have always been walking like an elephant, but realizing just like an ant, or you have been toiling more than ever, and you see your competitor doing fine, even though they didn't put enough effort as you have put, it because your season of favor is yet to come. But as you are here tonight, that season will knock your door in Jesus' name. So if we are trying to divine favor, uh, there may be one thing between favor, mercy, and grace. But let me define it by illustration. Supposing you have been saving money to buy a car of your choice, and uh, suddenly you went to car dealers, you got there at a certain time, and discovered that even what you have is not up to 50% of the cost of the car. And you're about going back. And suddenly, another person came in, and he was looking around on the showroom, and saw you, and said, ah, you resemble the son of so-so-so. Are you related? I say, it's my father. He's your father. Ah. Your father is a good person, and I've been looking for him. I didn't even know how to locate him. What, why are you here? And he said, I just come to buy a car. And he said, go and, go and pick the car now. He said, my money is not enough. He said, you don't have to worry to pay one cobble. Just pick the car, collect the paper, all is paid. And you started wondering. Three things will come to mind. Why? That is number one, place or location. Why is it the same car dealer you are that the man comes to? Season has a time. It has a place, it has a location. Your location will locate you today in Jesus' name. You know, another thing you have to think about is the time. Why is it the exact time you are in that particular car dealer shop or showroom that the man also walk in. Why did you not just go before he comes in? That is called time, the set time. He said the set time to favor you has come. So this is our set time for favor, and God will favor you in Jesus' name. And number two is the effort. With all the struggling, with all the saving, you discover that it doesn't make uh, even half of what you are intending to buy. So, therefore, favor can <clears throat> be a reward that cancels our labor. It can mean blessing of God that enriches a man beyond his means. It can also be defined, as some people say, is the height you gain by standing on someone else's shoulders. Whatever be the meaning, Favor will locate you today in Jesus' name. What of season? A season, on the other hand, is the time or dispensation within which certain action or events take place. Ecclesiastic chapter 3, verse 1. Ecclesiastic 3, 1. To everything there is a season, and every time to every purpose under the heaven. Now, the question is, what happens in the season of favor? Number one, fruitless labor will come to an end. Isaiah 65, 22 to 23. Isaiah 65, 22 to 23. They shall not breed and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, 
and my legs shall long enjoy the work of their hand. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth to, for trouble, for they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord, and their offspring with them. When a man is operating outside of favor, what ordinarily should be gotten without labor, without struggle, will become difficult for such a person and sometimes become impossible. When you look at the story of Peter in Luke chapter 5, when you begin to read from 1 to 6, for experience, Luke 5, 1 to 6, he had the experience, he had the expertise, he had the tools of trade, and he formed partnership. But all his labor for that particular night was fruitless. He said, we have toiled all night, but we caught nothing. When one is operating outside favor, everything that he does will be in futility. Everywhere he goes, he will face dryness. If that's your story, the one who changed the fortune of Peter by favor will change yours today in Jesus' name. Because Jesus just told him, enough of this, just launch onto the deep. He protested, but he obeyed. Immediately he obeyed, he caught net-breaking fishes in the same location, at the same environment, with the same net. You can see the difference of evil. What makes a change? Jesus was involved. If you allow Jesus to involve in your life, to be involved in your business, he will locate you with evil and things will change. Number two, those you did not knock we begin to open for you. Isaiah 45, verse 1. Isaiah 45, verse 1. Say, Thus said the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holding, to subdue nations before him, and I will lose the loins of kings to open before him the two leaf gates, and the gates shall not be shut. I pray for you and myself today. Every door of evil that God will open tonight will never be shut in Jesus' name. You remember the story in Luke of Apostle, chapter 5, 17 to 20. Act 5, 17 to 20. The apostles were preaching the word and they locked them in the prison by the authority. No matter how they knocked the door on their own effort, it would not be open because it's an iron at an iron gate, but something happened. God intervened, and the doors of the prison were opened on their own accord. Everywhere you have found yourself being imprisoned, either by poverty, sickness, disease, or forces of darkness, because this is your season of your favor, they shall all open on their own accord, and you begin to enjoy Divine favor in Jesus' name. In 2 Kings chapter 8, 3 to 6, 2 Kings 8, 3 to 6, that's another story concerning favor. You remember the Shunammite woman? She has gone for seven years according to the advice of Prophet Elisha. Coming back is her land, her harvest, her house, all was seized. But at the time that he wanted to go and report to the king, you can see the element of time, location, and uh, effort. That very day, God positioned Gaius to be with the king. And what were they talking? They were discussing about the story of this woman, how God gave her a child, and how the child died and uh, brought back to life again. It was then he, she came. And they said, behold, this is the woman. To cut the story short, all she wanted is that they will return his house and the land to her. But because favor already located her and it was easy of her favor, the king said, you are not only getting your land or your house. He appointed an officer. He said, follow her to her place. Collect the land, collect the house. Every affair, those people who sat on his farm have realized for past seven years, they should gather it back together and give to her. I pray favor will locate you today in Jesus' name. Number three, your location will change. 
In 1 Samuel chapter 2, 7 to 8, 1 Samuel 2, 7 to 8, the Bible says, The Lord make it poor and make it rich, and bring it low and lift it up. He raised up the poor out of the doors and lifted up the beggar from downhill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord, and he has said the word upon them. That's favor in action. He said God can bring somebody from downhill onto the top. And if you look at the story, Esther chapter 2, 16 to 17. Esther was, Esther 2, 16 to 17. Esther was an orphan, a slave in captivity in a foreign land. And he was living in the slave quarter. But when favor located her, she went just for a content that was not qualified, competent, and entitled to. And favor located, the Bible says, every eye that cited Esther, they cited her with favor. And you know what? At the end of the day, she will move from the slave quarters onto the palace because it became a queen in the land. Today, your location is changing in Jesus' name. So number four, you will recover lost time. One thing that also happened in the season of evil is that you will recover lost time. They say time lost cannot be regained, yes. But when favor comes in, it can reverse the irreversible. Joel chapter 2, 25. Joel 2, 25. He says, And I will restore to you the year that the locusts have eaten the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palm worm, my great army which I sent among you. Which I sent among you. You know, in 1 Kings 20, 1 to 7, 1 Kings 20, 1 to 7. Ezekiah has gotten to the terminal end of his time. He has exhausted his life's plan. God himself reminded him, it is time to come home. Pack your load, make, uh, guide your house, put your house in order. And he went to God and said, look at me. I'm not ready to go. I still have an assignment. I'm not ready to die now. I still have something I want to do for you. Please, don't let it be now. The same prophet that God sent to tell him that he's to die is the same prophet within the same period, within the same environment that God sent back and said, go and tell him. I've added 15 years to this year. Go and locate your life in Jesus' name. No situation, no challenge. No forces of darkness will swallow you and you will not die before your time in Jesus' name. God elongated his time. He will elongate our time in Jesus' name. Let's just pray at this point. Say, Father, thank you because the seasons of my life are in your hands. Father, I thank you because the seasons of my life are in your hands. Father, we thank you because the seasons of our lives are in your hands. Amen. Say, Father, thank you for your faithfulness and loving kindness towards me. Father, thank you for your faithfulness and loving kindness towards me. Father, I thank you for your faithfulness and loving kindness towards me. Amen. Say, Father, I thank you for what you will do again today concerning me. Lord, I'm thanking you right now for what you will do again concerning me in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Amen. What are the signs that your season of favor has come? Number one, you will hear from God. One thing that happens when season of time comes, or favor comes, is that God will speak to you. In Judges chapter 13, 2 to 3, Judges 13, 2 to 3, it said, And there was a certain man of Sora, of the family of Danite, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren, and bare not. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold, now thou art barren, and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive, and bear a son. God will speak the word of favor and comfort to you today in Jesus' name. Manu and the wife were barren, but because it was season of their favor, they had the voice of God. 
The angel came the first time. He spoke to the wife. The wife said, my husband is not around. When the husband came, he, she narrated the story. <laughs> he said, if it's God, let him speak to us again. Do you know the angel came the second time? Even though the husband was not around, he, the woman said, wait, let my husband come. And he waited until Manuel came. Because it was season of their favor, they had a voice. You too will have a voice today, and it will manifest in your life in Jesus' name. Number two, God will hear your cry. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. Second Corinthians 6, 2. For he said, I've had thee in a time accepted, and the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. If we hear your cry and give you salvation, if you can only call to him tonight, say, I'm a sinner. I know I'll not be walking right, but favor me with salvation. He will hear your cry. A cry is, a, when you cry, what are you doing? You are crying for help. You are crying for intervention. But sometimes people cry and nobody will, will, will hear them. It's by favor that your cry can be heard. When you cry, nobody hear. What can you do? But when you see 4 Samuel chapter 1, 4 to 7, 4 Samuel 1, 4 to 7, you know, Anna was the wife of Elkanah, and Elkanah have another wife. And that one had been tormenting Hannah. Anna had been crying every time she goes to Shiloh. But now, one day, God had a cry. Why? Because it was season of her favor. She went to Shiloh, number one, because God wanted to hear her cry. He inspired her to pray a kind of prayer that she had never prayed before. You too, when you are seeking for favor today, God will inspire you to pray a kind of prayer that you have never prayed before. Why? Because he back, she backed her prayer with vow. That if you give me a male child, I will give, it back, give the child back to you. Not only that, because it was season of our favor. When the priest tried to provoke her to anger by ridiculing her, calling her daughter of Belial, because it was season of our favor, instead of provocation, with humility and patience and the order, she answered the, 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 the priest. And the, God used the priest again to seal her favor on that day. Do you know what? She did not call barren again because the season of favor turned her to a fruitful woman. Not only one child, but having an additional five. Maybe it's your story we are talking today because God will visit you and uh, he will turn things around for you in Jesus' name. Number three, you will receive a divine visitation. Another sign that your season of favor has come is that you will receive a divine visitation. You know, in Luke chapter 19, 1 to 9, Luke 19, 1 to 9, it is a funny story. People were trooping right and center following Jesus Christ and there was a man, because of his natural disability, called Sarkios. He was a short man, and he wanted to see Jesus. That's all what he wanted to do, just to see who he is. And the people that are taller, they were, they were going, he couldn't see. So what, he now climbed his camel tree. And because it was season of his favor, the moment Jesus reached that part of the road, he looked up and saw circles on the tree. He said, circles, come down. You don't want to see me. This is my illustration. You are not only seeing me, I will follow you to your house today because salvation has entered into your house. Do you know, other that have been following, that are taller, that Jesus didn't visit their house. So he did not even shake hands with them. But he went to the house of circles, he heard with Sarkios. He visited the house of Sarkios. Someone is receiving divine visitation today in Jesus' name. Because this today is the, is season, the beginning of the season of our favor. Number four, 
Your helpers will locate you. Your helper will locate you. When David was running to it for his life because of Saul, why? Saul made up his mind to kill him, to terminate his life so that he will not become a king. But God gathered some people. Let me read just a few verses for you. First Chronicles chapter 12, 20 to 22. First Chronicles 12, 20 to 22. Let me quickly start from 21. 21, please. Because of our time. And they helped David against the band of the rovers, for they were all mighty men of valor and were captain in the host. For at the time, day by day, there came to David to help him until it was a great host, like the host of God. You know, destiny helper. They were coming one by one to help David, to defend David, and before you know it, they became a strong army. He was not the one looking for them. They were the one locating David. I pray your destiny helper, because it is your season of evil, we locate you today in Jesus' name. Yes, let us pray. Say, Father, hear my cry tonight and turn around my season for good in Jesus' name. Father, hear my cry tonight and turn around my season for good in Jesus' name. Amen. Say, Father, please do not hold your peace until you have accomplished your purpose concerning me in Jesus' name. Father, please do not hold your peace until you accomplish your purpose concerning me in the name of Jesus. Father, please accomplish your purpose concerning me in the name of Jesus. Amen. Say, Father, let your favor locate me and give me a new song in Jesus' name. Father, let your favor locate me and give me a new song in Jesus' name. Father, let your favor locate me and give me a new song in Jesus' name. Amen. Say, Father, shine your light upon me and let me not be hidden from my helpers in Jesus' name. Father, shine your light upon me and don't let me be hidden from my destiny helpers in Jesus' name. Father, please shine your light upon me and don't let me be hidden from my destiny helpers in Jesus' name. Amen. How will your season of evil come? How will my season of evil come? Number one, God will open the book of remembrance for you. Esther chapter 6, 1 to 12. Esther 6, 1 to 12. When the enemy want to destroy the Jews in the foreign land, where Esther and Mordecai was, God took away sleep from King Aceros. And he was looking on the historical book. And he saw where Mordecai terminated the plan to assassinate him. And he asked, what have we done in compensating this man? And they said nothing. That night, God opened the book of remembrance from Mordecai. God, because it was his time of evil, the enemy that wanted to terminate him was ridiculed. Because the same enemy was told to carry him around the whole city and say, this is the man that the king delighted on. Your enemy will be put to shame in Jesus' name because God will open the book of remembrance for you. Number two, your emptiness shall be filled. John 2, 7 to 10. John 2, 7 to 10. You see, in the journey of life, sometimes we become empty. We may be thinking that we are full, but according to life, because life is not going the same way all the time at every season. A season may, become, may come that we feel empty. In John chapter 2, 7 to 10, John 2, 7 to 10, the bridegroom was already prepared, full of himself, of his planning, of every arrangement he has made. And it was a time of joy because he was getting married. But suddenly, in the midst of the ceremony, in the midst of the joy, the wine finished. 
So it became empty. The ceremony became empty. The wedding became empty. And there is no kind of emptiness they can easily feel. Maybe the environment, they cannot get another wine quickly. And if available, maybe they don't have the money. And what happened? Jesus was there by invitation. If you read verse 7, Jesus said unto them, Fill the water pot with water, and they fill them up to the brim. And he said unto them, Draw out now, and bear unto the governor of the feast, and they bear it. The pot were there, but the pot were also empty, nothing inside. But Jesus filled the emptiness. He turned it to be, become the best wine for the day. And what was not enough became more than enough. Are you suffering from emptiness in one area, either spiritually? You, have, you, are, you just feel that you are empty spiritually. What you have been doing for God before, you find it difficult to do now. You find it difficult to pray. You find it difficult to fast. You find it difficult to do the work of God. It, God will feel that emptiness in Jesus' name because it's your time and season of favor. Number two, you will receive divine guidance. In number 22, 21 to 35, number 22, 21 to 35, Balaam was the prophet who disobeyed God by trying to call the Israelite. And on his way, after God had told him not to go, and he was about going, when he forced the hand of God to say, okay, go now. On the way, God sent an angel with a sword to just kill him. And there was no way of escape because it was a narrow path and the angel was standing in the midst of the road. So the ass now bending to the right, bending to the left, and he started beating the, the ass. And uh, God opened the mouth of the ass. Why are you beating me? If I disobey you, am I not the one you have been climbing for years? To cut the story short, God now opened his eyes and he saw that angel was standing where it was to pass to kill him. The angel now said, why are you beating the ass? You could have been destroyed if not because of this eye. He was guided by an ass because the ass opened the mouth and saw the vision that the prophet could not see. God will not allow your eyes, your spiritual eye, to be blind in Jesus' name. Many are Christian, but their spiritual eyes are being totally blind. Ask could see what man could not see. But because it was season of favor, God guided him from destruction. In this year and beyond, God will guide you against every destructive ask in Jesus' name. You will, number four, you will be at the right place at the right time. Second Kings chapter 17, 9 to 16. Second Kings 17, 9 to 16. When your season of favor comes, you will be at the right place at the right time. The widow who have only one meal for him, for her and the wife to cook and to die. They were at the gate. At the same time, Prophet Elijah was coming to the gate. There are other widows there in Sarifat. Why is it only this widow was at the gate at that time? That is season of favor. Not only that, the, the prophet demanded what is practically impossible to release. But because it was a season of favor, she was able to sacrifice the food, the, the last meal for the prophet. And that favor her and the family to pass through the three and a half years of famine without regret. God will favor you in Jesus' name. We're going to pray a few prayers and say, O oh Lord of mercy, Please fill my emptiness in Jesus' name, O oh Lord of mercy. Please fill all my emptiness in Jesus' name. Amen. Say, Father, by your mercy, don't let me miss my season of jubilation in Jesus' name. Father, by your mercy, don't let me miss my season of jubilation in Jesus' name. Father, by your mercy, don't let me miss the season of my jubilation in Jesus' name. Say, Father, tonight... Let your favor cancel every insult in my life in Jesus' name. Father, tonight, 
Let your favor cancel every insult in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Finally, you're going to say, Father, change the times and season of my life for good in Jesus' name. Father, change the times and season of my life for good in Jesus' name. Father, change the times and season of my life for good in Jesus' name. Amen. What can I do not to miss my season of favor? One, wait patiently for God's time. Psalm 40 verse 1. I wait patiently for the Lord and incline unto me and heard my cry. You need patience. Number two, be hospitable even to strangers. Hebrews 13 2. Hebrews 13 2. Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, for by so then some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing. In Genesis 18, 6 to 8, Abraham and Sarah got the promise of 25 years in one day just because of their generosity. Some children of God, they don't know how to give. They are so stingy. You come to visit them, they will not offer you even water to drink. That must change if you want your sister of favor to come. Be generous. Be generous. God expects you because our God is generous God. He expects the children also to be same. Number three, be ready to forgive and show favor to others. Matthew 6, 14. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. The reason why Joseph continued to receive favor upon favor, even in the prison yard, was because he was always ready to forgive. Even his brother that he supposed not to forgive, he forgave in them. But many children of God are losing favor today because they harbor unforgiveness. So be ready to forgive. Number four, pay your vows and pledges promptly. I now made a, a vow. First Samuel 1, 26 to 28. First Samuel 1, 26 to 28. She made a vow. The only son she gave back to God. Many people, you, pay, you didn't pay even tithe. Talk less of paying vow. Pledges upon pledges are, are multiplying. But you don't, you don't count it as anything. John right, I will do this, I will do that. There is agreement between you and God, and God will hold you to it. God is not forcing you to pledge. So when you make a pledge, you make a vow, make sure you pay. That will motivate in, in, uh, the season of your favor. Please don't forget. In conclusion, favor is neither a right or an entitlement, but a privilege. Therefore, God alone determine who he will favor. May you be one of them today in Jesus' name. And because he's a just God, he will give everyone opportunity to receive favor. And the opportunity is given to you today is opportunity to receive favor of salvation. All you need to do is to say, Lord Jesus, I'm here. I want to serve you. I want to give my life to you today. And if you do so, he will receive you. Romans 9, 14 to 15. Romans 9, 14 to 15. We say what we say then. Is there any unrighteousness with God? God forbid. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. He determines who to favor. If you say I surrender to you today, and you want us to pray for you, please stand up where you are. and say, Father, I declare, I surrender my life, I begin to serve you. So that we enjoy your favor. Let's pray. Father Almighty, as many as are ready to stop living in sin, to stop living carelessly, and they want to surrender totally to you because of your word. They want to, you to be their savior. Receive them today. Let your blood wash away their sin and give them power to serve you to the end in Jesus' name. If you have joined us in this prayer, you will see some Numbers on the screen, we will, please write your detail and send it to those numbers. It will reach information deaths of Daddy and Father and the Lord, who will be praying for you. But if you are nearer to any redeemed Christian Church of God parish, just meet the pastor and say you want to send your details to Daddy, he will guide you and he will reach him. Before we, we want to pray the last prayer before we conclude and give our offering. Say, Father, the season of my life are in your hand. Please give me fullness of joy in Jesus' name. Father, the season of my life are in your hands. 
Please give me fullness of joy in Jesus' name. Amen. Say, Father, by your mighty and strong hand, approve every mountain again my season of evil in Jesus' name. Father, by your mighty and strong hand, Uproot every mountain against my season of favor in Jesus' name. Father, by your mighty and strong hand, please uproot every power, every force against my season of favor in Jesus' name. Amen. Finally, say, Father, please grant me all round favor in Jesus' name. Father, please grant me all round favor in Jesus' name. Please grant me all round favor in Jesus' name. Kindly, let us pray together right now. Tell Jesus your need. The favor will locate you. If you are sick in your body, tell it to Jesus as well. I want to assure you that our Father and the Lord is backing us up in prayer concerning this program. I have the confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ that you will not go back the way you came. You will meet that need that's in your heart in your heart will be met today in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. You say you will show mercy unto whom you will show mercy because it's not he that willeth and all that runneth, but for you that showeth mercy. You have declared to us today that this is season of favor. Whatever is standing against us and our favor, whatever obstacle enemy has placed on our way of favor, please remove tonight by your blood in Jesus' name. Every area that we have been rejected, dejected, Father, let favor locate that area and make us to be acceptable in the name of Jesus. Everything that we have been working and working against or working against our destiny, because it is our season of favor, turn situation around and let them be go begin to work for our success, begin to work for greatness, begin to work for our achievement, achievement in Jesus' name. And by your mercy and favor, every sickness in the body, every disease, every virus, terminate them today in Jesus' name. Let favor continue to locate us to fulfill purpose and destiny in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Now it's time to give our favorable offering. It's because you are favored that you have something to give. Lift it up to God. Father, we bless your name for this offering. Let favor locate this offering, O Lord, and let poverty terminate in our life in Jesus' name. Let every lack cease forever in Jesus' name. Use it for your glory in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord.